Hey, everyone. <clears throat> Who's been to China recently? Okay, I spent, uh, actually, my co-founder Steve Bell here spent nine years in China, and I didn't really get it when he was telling me how you couldn't access the internet. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm sure you can figure it out. Like, what's the big deal? And then I went to Beijing. I went to Shanghai first and then to Beijing, and I could not get Gmail. I could not get Facebook, and obviously that's super important to me. And so I was like, what the heck is going on? So I downloaded some VPNs, that didn't work. Downloaded some more, that didn't work. And then I got access to our software, and it worked. So I'm gonna tell you what we've been doing since May, um, when this, this great team got together. Um, so I've been joined, myself, I've been in the crypto space since 2013. Uh, I was part of the Pantera team, focused on venture. Um, my co-partner, co-founder Steve Bell, uh, was at Trilogy Ventures, running the team there um, in China for nine years, and previously a uh, serial entrepreneur. Brian Fox was the uh, author of Bash, and first employee of the Free Software Foundation, many other amazing things he's done. Jay Freeman wrote and managed Sadia, which is a jailbreak for the iPhone. And Gustav Simonson was the uh, security lead for the Ethereum core development team. Um, we've been supported by some great people, in addition to the people there. Uh, Matt Rosak's also been a great supporter from the beginning. We have um, some incredible investors that we pulled together in July. Um, many of the top venture funds in Silicon Valley, and also uh, teams such as Polychain Capital. And uh, you can certainly access more information about that on our website. This is the problem we're focused on. Uh, we are very concerned about the issue that the internet is heavily surveilled and has significant censorship on it. Um, when you think about freedom of speech, part of freedom of speech is not just being able to speak, but also being able to access information. And as we look today in the issues of fake news and uh, <clears throat> you know, kind of the inability for people in many countries, especially the Middle East, to really access information and express themselves, I think it becomes very clear why this is such an important issue for the world. Uh, the other area which is very important is surveillance. So the um, surveillance is not just an issue for governments, it's also an issue for corporations. Uh, in my home country, England, there are more closed circuit cameras per person than any other country in the world. And so one of my friends, Zuko, is, actually makes this comment that we may end up with a situation, if we get this right, that the internet may be the last place that we can actually be private. The way this works is as follows. We have two participants in this network, consumers and contributors. Uh, bandwidth contributors are essentially providing access to consumers by donating, well actually not donating, but selling their bandwidth. So if you've got a computer at home or if you're running a data center, you can provide access to the internet in anonymous and encrypted format, and in return you will receive ORCID tokens. Those ORCID tokens are provided to you by consumers. The consumers will be using a small piece of software, which will either be a standalone piece of software, probably feel a little bit like a VPN, but it'll also be anonymous and encrypted, or maybe it'll be integrated into Facebook, there's lots of ways this could work. Ideally, it'll be on your iPhone or your Android and all of your other devices. In order to make this work, we need a number of different participants. We have a series of different relay nodes, and if you're familiar with the concepts of onion routing, this is essentially the same approach, but with some very important additions. And the exit node or proxy node is the node that actually grabs the internet resource, whether it's a website, um, virtual reality resource, a game, an app, and then wraps that back up in layered encryption and returns it back to the person in China or the Middle East so they can actually access content on the internet. We've invented a number of new things to improve upon the state of the art, and we of course welcome input on all these things. We've written a very comprehensive white paper, which we'll be updating soon. Uh, we are in the process of releasing source code, and we are very welcome you to get in touch with us about that. And uh, I'll be mentioning our timeline shortly. 
We've invented some interesting things such as micropayments on the network, denial of service resistance, eclipse resistance, and civil resistance. A very important idea that we've uh, improved upon, we believe, is the idea of using whitelists. Whitelists allow you to specify on your exit node which kinds of content you're willing to route traffic to. We're not in the business of censorship, but the open source community will be able to create different kinds of whitelists in order to say, I'm willing to route traffic to Wikipedia if I'm in China, if I'm outside of China. Or if I'm in Sweden, maybe I just route to whatever I feel like. There's many projects out there that are trying to do something in a decentralized way, trying to change the world in some fashion. Um, we believe and we would like to become uh, this, the decentralized open source technology for internet free from surveillance and censorship globally. Thank you.